Mina, Ohio Examus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Yep, it's a good morning. If you look at the window behind me, you see a little bit of light peeking out there, and that is the light of the morning sun. One of those days for me again. This time we're going to hop into Psalm 17, and we're just going to look at verse 1 here for a few minutes. This is another um, Psalm of David, and it's the, the title of this one. I'm, I'm going to settle on the word for title for these, that little thing above verse 1. I'm going to settle on the word title. So the title of Psalm 17 is A Prayer of David, not just a psalm, but a prayer. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry, give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. And I've looked at this verse and I was like, you know, that first verse right there is an incredibly solid example of a model prayer. Like if you want to know how to pray, that's perfect right there. Hear a just cause, O Lord. A just cause. Sometimes we wonder why God seems to not answer our prayers. And there, uh, this is not just a 30-minute message. That could be a, ton, a series of 30-minute messages on prayer, on its importance, on how to properly do it. I will say, since this is a quickie, you don't need to be in a specific posture or a specific place. You pray anywhere. God will hear you. That's not a problem. But hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. When you do pray to the Lord, is it a just cause? Let me give you a few examples. There are the big, God doesn't care whether it's a big or a small thing. The just cause could be, God, that person needs to be saved. Would you please introduce them to your son? That's a just cause. You want that person saved and going to heaven. God wants that too. Then there, you could even throw in at the end of that prayer, God, if you want to use me to do it, please show me how. That's another just cause. Not only do you want that person saved, but you want to get in on God's work. You want to assist in any way you can in something that God wants done. Those, in my opinion, are some of the best prayers when we are involving ourselves in the things that God wants to do. If you see someone um, you know, that's having a hard time, say, God, would you please be with that person? And then the the, the I, alternative is not quite the right word, but the for lack of a better one, the alternative prayer, God, what can I do to help that person? Would you please show me how I can help that person? Now, sometimes it's not always appropriate for us to get involved. Sometimes we need to just kind of butt out, mind our own business, but we're still concerned. Pray for that person. If you can get involved, though, great. Again, the alternative and superior form when you are getting yourself involved in God's work. On kind of the negative spectrum of things, um, you know, God, please forgive that person for what they did to me. That was really offensive. I don't like that. Maybe you tuned into yesterday's message. This was actually kind of applicable to that because I was a little bit offended by somebody. So, you know, God, just help me to forgive them. I pray that you would also, you know, bring to their mind that they did something wrong. Please show them their wrongdoing um, and help me in my heart to forgive them. You're aligning up with God's will to love and to forgive even your enemy. That is a just cause. What would not be a just cause? Well, what does God consider sinful? For example, God, please help me you know, get, with that, get with that other person. Help me to seduce that person. Well, if they're not your spouse, God's not going to answer that prayer because God doesn't believe in sex before marriage. He's not a fan of that. Or God, you know, help me get with this person. They're so much better than my spouse. God wants you to stay faithful to your spouse. He's not going to help you with adultery. God, I really want that. I'm trying, what's a good that MP3 player? Would you please help me get it out of this store without the security cameras finding me in Jesus' name? That's not a just cause. God's not going to help you steal. Or how about this one? God, I didn't get to work like I should have. Help me to get help me to tell a good lie that'll convince the boss um, to not get me in trouble. God's not going to answer that prayer either. That's not a just cause. The God of truth is not going to help you lie. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and that last one kind of leads into the next part of verse 1. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Now, of course, that applies to the obvious. God's not going to help you lie. But past that, if you're going to God and you're praying to Him, something that's not actually on your heart, if you're praying to Him something and your prayer is to try to look good or to sound good or to sound holy, 
God's not going to hear that prayer either. God knows what's on your mind and in your heart. You can't fool him. You can't hide from him. You can't put on a show or a pretense or lie to him. God will see through that. If you have deceitful lips, if your prayer is one trying to, I guess, appease God or just look good before God or just sound holy, even if it's in front of a crowd of people, you may fool the people. You're not fooling God. And God will not hear that prayer. So that, that, mo that verse right there, great model for how our prayer lives should go. There's so much more that can be said, but that's a really good starting ground. That's what I want to share with you guys today. So thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.